Hey guys, it's Neil again from Harder Texas Armory, and today I've got another video review of another Phoebus watch, and it's going to be one right here on the right-hand side, the Phoebus Ocean Master, and this is Phoebus's 1,000-meter dive watch, the automatic version. Now, Phoebus has had a 1,000-meter dive watch for a while now, I guess for about a year and a half, but that one was a quartz watch, and it came on a rubber bracelet, and an incredible watch, but people have been asking Phoebus for a while to do that watch in an automatic, and that's what you see here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a video review of this watch here. I'll first start off with specs and kind of break down some talking points and then finish with positives and negatives. Uh, but boy, it's really impressive watch. I'll just say that right off the bat. Um, definitely worth the money. Uh, the price on these is $299, and you get a list of features that will blow you away. Uh, simply incredible that they offer this quality of a watch at that price point. Now, this watch here I've actually had for about about a week now. I got it in from uh, Aaron Dunlap. Uh, he's doing a watch tour with this watch. So, it you know, first he had it, of course, and did a video review. It went over to Marshall Time where he did a video review, and now it's here at my shop. And after I'm done with it, I'll be shipping it out to Scott at Watches Galore. You'll find links to all these guys down below. And I believe it's going to go to a couple other people too, Peter Von Ponda, I believe, and one other guy, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I'll provide links down below for those guys as well. So let's quickly just kind of go over the specs of this watch. And I got my Phoebus Quartz watch here, so you can just see a comparison in size and you know how they look. Uh, compare the two models, contrast it. That, that's a really great watch too for about $100. But let's get that out of the way because that's not what we're talking about today. And we'll quickly go over the specs of this watch here. So um, what you're looking at is a case diameter of 43 millimeters. You've got a lug width here for your straps of 22. Lug to lug of 48 millimeters, so not too bad. Um, you know, it's, it, it's a large watch, but it's gonna wear smaller with that 48 millimeter. Uh, your case thickness is, is about 15 millimeters, so fairly thick, which is uh, understandable being a 1,000 meter dive watch. And here's the, the big one. <laughs> the weight with the bracelet here, according to my scale, I'm getting 206 grams. Now, that is, that's heavy. Uh, I've never owned a watch that heavy. Uh, you know, maybe some of you guys are used to that, but that was really uh, one of the things that kind of shocked me is just the actual weight of this thing. I mean, it, it, it is heavy. Uh, that could be a positive, could be a negative. I mean, it, one thing, it, it, it definitely feels like a quality uh, watch, but that weight is, in, is pretty uh, pretty heavy. Uh, your movement, you're, you got a Seiko movement in here, the NH35A, which is a workhorse movement, just an excellent movement. Uh, it is hacking, and uh, you can hand wind it, which is nice. And then you'll notice up here on the side of the case, you've got a helium release valve, which uh, being a 1,000-meter dive watch, you know, that's kind of ne necessary to have that. Um, you know, none of us will probably ever use that, but uh, if you did, it's there. Um, so that's kind of a look at the specs. And next up, we're going to bring it in a little closer and, and look at this watch in a little more detail. So I'll be right back. Let me zoom in for you guys. All right, guys, I'm zoomed in here so we can take a closer look at this beautiful watch. So let's start off with the case and the movement. Uh, the case size, like I mentioned, is a 43 millimeter case. Now, the lug to lug is only 48, so... Uh, it's going to fit a lot of wrist uh, sizes. You know, even though this looks big on paper when you see the specs, it actually wears a little smaller. I would say it wears in the 41 to 42 millimeter case size uh, compared to most watches. So um, I was a little scared, you know, because I typically like to wear 40 to 42, 42 being the absolute largest. Uh, but this thing actually wears pretty good on my wrist. I've got a seven inch wrist and you should be seeing a uh, pop up right now of, of a wrist check. Uh, so you can see what this looks like on my wrist, but uh, it actually wears pretty good. You know, I, I think it's going to fit a variety of wrist sizes, maybe from about six and three quarters up to, you know, eight inch wrist. So it's going to fit a lot of wrist sizes, which is a positive. Um, now, the case, of course, being a thousand meter dive watch, we've got a full stainless steel case. We've got a screw down crown, screw down uh, case back that, you know, everything is is overbuilt being a, a thousand meter dive watch. You'll notice that the finish on this is kind of a brushed or bead blast kind of type finish, uh, which I feel that's a positive. It's going to help uh, hide scratches and dings a lot better. You know, this is a tool watch, a dive watch, a beater watch. So 
Uh, I'm glad they didn't have really any polished surfaces on this thing. The, pretty much the whole watch is, is going to be that finish. There are a few sections that are slightly polished, like on the end of the crown there. And, uh, but mainly the, the entire body, the case, the bracelet are all going to be that brush finished. Uh, and I'm happy they went with that. The movement, which is the Seiko NH35A, is a workhorse of a movement. Um, it's one of my favorite movements. I mean, the, the timekeeping is going to be very accurate. I'm averaging about plus eight seconds with this watch. Uh, so it's very, you know, very accurate uh, movement. And it's also a cheap movement that's easy to replace or if you need to repair something on it or regulate it. Uh, just about any watch shop is going to be able to work on these, which is a huge positive. You know, they could have went with like an ETA movement and jacked up the price, but to be honest, uh, you're not gonna really gonna get any better accuracy. And I actually prefer this NH35. It's just, it's a pure workhorse of a movement and that's perfect for this particular watch. Uh, you're looking at 24 joules with it. It beats at 21,600 beats per hour, which is, you know, mid-range, uh, you know, beats per minute or beats per hour, excuse me. But again, that's gonna prolong the life of this watch. Uh, it's got a 41 hour uh, power reserve as well, which is not bad. And it's hacking and hand winding, just like you'd expect. So it's an excellent movement. Um, your crown here, you'll see is protected by these massive uh, crown guards. Uh, one of the largest crown guards I've ever seen. I mean, there's no way you could damage that crown. Uh, the negative is it's kind of hard to get into it. So, you know, you don't have as much uh, crown surface area to grab onto. You can't grab it from this direction, obviously, only from the top or from the bottom. Uh, the good thing is the crown is well uh, jumped here, so you, you do have a good texture that you can bite into. And it's it's not hard to unwind. I'm just, you know, you're just gonna have to only come from the top or bottom. Uh, but the benefit is you will never damage that crown. When it's screwed in, uh, there's no way to damage it. Uh, your helium release valve here is also screwed down, so it's a manually open valve. I, well, the valve is actually automatic, but you have to unscrew this first before uh, you know, you're gonna be able to use that valve. And I like that. And it's, you can see the texture on it's well done too. Very easy to unscrew if you ever needed to. Uh, your case back here, now I'm not gonna take off the bracelet, but you can see it's a typical uh, Phoebus logo, that uh, King Octo uh, logo, which is really cool. Uh, you know, you can see the text on there too. Ocean Master, just the basic stuff. It's gonna tell you a thousand meters, uh, serial number and some other information too. But uh, it's screw down. Uh, I believe it's double sealed. Being a thousand meter dive watch, that's important. So that's nice upgrade there. Uh, just everything is just overbuilt on this watch. You can see the thickness of it. It, it is a thick watch. It's going to ride high on your wrist. But uh, again, this, that's what this watch is, is for. This is for uh, actually actual dive use. Your crystal here is going to be a sapphire crystal, which is always a positive, a very durable, dur uh, durable crystal. You're not going to really scratch this thing, which is which is a huge positive as well. Now the loom is simply incredible. You've got uh, Super Luminova C3 on the embassies, the hands, uh, the second hand even has a little dot on it too. Uh, the pip here is also loomed and you should be seeing a loom shot pop up right now. Uh, just an impressive loom. I mean, it's one of the best, the, out of all the watches I've ever owned, this has got to be in the top, you know, two or three. Uh, just very impressive. It's almost Seiko quality. So uh, y'all, y'all guys all know how good the loom is on Seiko. So Seiko watches. So this is right up there with them. And uh, Phoebus has really improved the loom on all their watches. And man, they, they listen to their customers and they if there's something lacking with a product, they'll come out with a generation two and upgrade it. And when they went with this new automatic version, wow, that loom is impressive. That's, that's really good that they did that. Uh, now your bezel, you've got the standard 120 uh, click unidirectional bezel. Excellent action. It's very smooth, but solid. You can hear the clicks. Super easy to set. Uh, precise. It's not too hard to turn. It's just, it's, uh, it's, it's it reminds me of a Rolex Submariner, to be honest with you. Uh, you'll have perfect lineup on this watch, at least on this particular uh, model here that, that I have here. Uh, it's this, a pleasure to use. So uh, that's always been a positive. Most of the Phoebus watches are are really good on the bezel action. So I'm, I'm pleased to report that this new watch is it, it's the exact same. It's, it's just excellent. Uh, there is slight little bit of back play, but it's, it's, I mean, it's nothing to worry about, guys. I mean, that's just natural. I mean, you're not going to have a watch that doesn't have any black back play, and this is excellent. Uh, the bracelet is also a positive. So Everything is, is solid. You know, you have solid end links, solid links. 
Um, even the clasp here, which you'll see how this operates, you've got a first safety mechanism there on the clasp, and then you have to push both these buttons to release. You'll see that the entire clasp is also machined. So, I mean, it's a very high quality uh, clasp. It's very comfortable. You also have your uh, dive extension, which is easy to uh, actuate if you needed to increase the size over a wetsuit or something like that. Uh, so everything is, is really high quality on this bracelet. The bracelet's excellent, and I don't really care for bracelets. I always switch them over to uh, NATO straps. I didn't on this one again, because this is uh, going on a watch tour, and I didn't want to uh, risk making any marks on the actual back of the case, removing the bracelet. But, you know, so I wore this thing exclusively with this bracelet, and it's excellent. It doesn't grab any of your hairs. It's comfortable quality. doesn't rattle. Uh, just very high quality. The only thing I'll mention is that the, uh, the you know, if you need to take out a link, they are pins, so they're not screws. That may be something that Phoebus wants to upgrade in the future is go ahead and upgrade those two screws. Uh, I know it's going to cost a little bit more, but you're not talking a huge jump in cost. Uh, at least I don't think it would be. And that would be something to look forward to. Um, now the dial, you can see the dial has also been improved over the quartz model. They've, uh, it's very just basic dial. There's not a lot of excess text on there. Just very clean looking dial with that beautiful black. Uh, you can see the logo. They've gone, let me see if I can bring it in and zoom it in here. If it will. There we go. Hopefully that's in focus for you guys at least a little bit. Uh, it's the Octopus logo. It looks like Phoebus is now going to start putting that on all their new watches, and I think that's a great improvement over, you know, say for instance this one here, which is just the Phoebus uh, text. Uh, I really like that logo. I think it's one of the coolest on the market. So that's definitely a win for Phoebus. I'm glad they switched to that. All the loom is well done. You saw the loom shot, but there's no bleed out. None of the, the loom is not over any of the embassy markings or anything like that. It's just professionally done. Just an excellent uh, dial, particularly for a dive watch. Uh, you know, if you're actually using this for diving, uh, the black dials are just perfect. It gives you good contrast. It's easy to read, and this is a win. Uh, the hands are really nice, too. Um, everything is just high quality on this watch. I'm, like I keep mentioning, it, it really blew me away. They do have some other uh, colors, and you should be seeing those pop up right now. They have a green dial. Uh, and a blue, I believe. So you should be seeing those. Your your bezel insert here is aluminum. Uh, I wish it would have been ceramic, but it's not the end of the world. I mean, aluminum has worked for you know decades. Uh, it will scratch up easier than the ceramic, but uh, it's it's not a big deal in my in my opinion. Yes, I would have preferred the ceramic, but uh, this is still a quality bezel. So. What are the positives with these things? The main positives I'm gonna mention is gonna be the price. At $299, it's just an incredible watch for the money. Uh, so that's definitely one of the biggest positives. You get sapphire crystal, you get a really good bezel, uh, the movement, that Seiko NH35A, incredible movement. You know, all these are just excellent positives. You've got a really good crown uh, guards here to protect your watch. You've got 1,000 meter dive watch, uh, rating, water res resistance rating, helium escape valve. Uh, you've got the improvements on the dial. Uh, you've got a really cool engraving on the case back. The bracelet's excellent. Uh, just a, a, I'm serious, guys. It's hard to explain how impressive this watch is for the money unless you have it in your hand. Uh, and, of course, the loom is good. So, I mean, it's just a home run of a, of a dive watch. Now, the negatives I'll mention would be it is extremely heavy. In fact, it's so heavy that I probably wouldn't wear this watch uh, unless I was actually using it for diving. Uh, I'm just not used to the weight of this this a watch that's heavy. It, it just wears on my wrist. It just feels like a weight's on there. Um, it gets a little uncomfortable, you know, particularly if you're walking and, you know, maybe the crown's like digging into your wrist a little bit just from the weight of it. Uh, again, it's not a huge negative, but I'm, I'm going to put that in a negative. I got to think of something here, guys, for this watch. Uh, the thickness also being, you know, just over 15 millimeters, it's a little thick, but again, uh, that's par for the course with this particular watch. I mean, it's, it's, it's a beast of a watch. And I will mention that the bezel, it, it does line up pretty much. It's just not exactly perfect. Now, you're really never going to find a watch that lines up exactly perfect, but I'm just going to mention a little nitpick. These are just tiny little nitpicks, guys. Uh, there's not a lot wrong with this watch. But like I mentioned, you know, this is just an incredible watch for the money. Uh, it really blew me away. You know, would I actually purchase this watch for myself? Um... You know, if I did a lot of diving, I certainly would. 
Uh, but I'm more of a snorkeling kind of guy, so this is really overkill for me. Uh, it's just heavier. Um, I'm never going to use the helium escape valve. Uh, so, you know, no, I probably wouldn't purchase this, uh, which is why I'm glad I'm able to get this watch in just to do a review on it from Aaron. Uh, but, you know, if you're into diving and you don't have a whole, you know, a lot of money to spend on a watch, say, you know, t drop $10,000 on a Rolex Submariner, you're not going to lose much going with this thing. $300, you're going to get everything a Rolex is going to give you besides the name. Uh, in fact, it's going to outperform, you know, most <laughs> Rolex Submariners unless you go up to the deep sea model. So uh, bottom line is it's an incredible watch. Uh, I do recommend it if you're going to use it for uh, diving or if you just like big, you know, heavy watches. You know, this is going to be one for you as well. I mean, it definitely feels like a quality watch. Uh, it feels like a thousand dollar plus watch. I mean, no BS either. It really does. So uh, anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you got any questions or comments on this, leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, again, remember, I'm about to ship this off to Scott over at Watches Galore. So continue to, you know, if you're not subscribed to him, subscribe to him so you can watch his video review of it, as well as the other guys that have viewed this uh, watch. So this has been Neil at Heart of Texas Armory. I hope you had a Merry Christmas, and I'll catch you on the next one. Y'all guys take care.